Well, sure. How you get an app? How you have hung up? Have you a light? I have. If you have a light, you must have a fag. Jim me one. <laughs> Good man. I must buy ten one of the days. Were you in the rack? What business is it of yours? You were not of any net. You're only out of the bed. What happened? Did you shite in it? Why are you all so fucking interested in what I'm doing? You must have fuck all else to talk about. The same shit every day. Were you in the rack? Mind your own fucking business. Jesus, you're in bad form. Any word from the kill car one? Is it any wonder why a lad would be in bad form listening to the dung every day of the week? And stop. Don't talk to me about that rotten cunt. What's wrong? Are you still out? Did you ever hear of a song by Charlie Pride called The Streets of Baltimore? I don't know. Sing me a bar of it there and I see. It goes a little something like this. I have sold the form to take my woman to where she longed to be. We left our friends and all our kin back there in Tennessee. I know it. A mighty tune. Many the night I was like a spraying machine on the dance floor in Declan, only murdering it and sweat flying out of him. Well, I sold the farm as well for 70 grand to take my woman to where she longed to be. And it wasn't fucking Baltimore either. It was getting turned upside down in Walsh's from vodka and Red Bull seven nights a week. Then have to drag her back to the house, and I cracked, and the thoughts of having to wag myself again tonight while rape in her arse. And it like a dung spreader fartin' and shitin'. Her ring was never the same since that Italian bollocks put his meat in it. Ooh, and the smell of brown off the cunt. The landlord had to call out Dino Rod cause she kept blocking the shitter with jam rags. Whoa, isn't she the dirty cunt? What the fuck is wrong with her to be going on with that owl crack? Stop, my heart is broke. And the fucking house full of wine bottles and beer bottles and I getting knocked on the stairs with them. Bought a caddy van and it's flat drawn them to the bottle bank. And that's the only bank she will be let within an ass's roar of after the stunt she pulled in town. What do you mean? She was in charge of filling the drink link, but she was filling her handbag, and they politely told her to fuck off. And what is she doing now for a crust? Sure, I rented a salon in town so we could start up our own business, shaving cats and the like and bought all the bits and bobs to leave them as bald as a coot. I forked out six grand for her to do a three-month course in Limerick, five days a week, and gave her 300 lats every Friday, and it would have been money better spent in at the horse, because the stupid bitch failed it due to been absolutely welded to the bed on a Monday. Then the shit hit the fan. The younger sister moved in with us, oh lord, another nut job, and not a sign of her to pay a rex of rent, as if it was not enough to have one alcoholic to deal with, now I had to. I had to sell me truck keen to keep the bottles of wine and the big dinners paid for in the Gregory. I even stooped as low as Gatherin Howell's crap, but Jack Paddy had it all swept. So I whipped a Citroen Zancha that was parked in the lane across from Luke Kelly's, I just pulled up in front of it, smashed the steering lock and dragged it up on the truck and hit off into Iran where as far as Paddy scrap and traded it for a few euros. Getting up then every day at one and two o'clock, and no work, and the one and she thrown in the cut on conscious from beer and fine wines, and she stick as an owl badger. Would you not bring her on a short break or a holiday, and put a patch in it, like you did before? You're always saying it is a mighty way of dealing with her, when she is breaking your balls. Will you stop? I brought her on six holidays last year and it was the same crack abroad. Swelled up from grub and mopping pints, and puke and shite flying out of her. Her sheet is starting to wear fairly thin with me. I spent a fortune getting her car ready for the NCT. I put a new mirror on it, insured it, taxed it and filled it with petrol and then she wasn't able to drive it because she was too shit-faced. She only had it back a day or two, and she swept the mirror off again. A lad would want to be shite and money to keep that one going. Sure did you hear what the tramp did in court last year? We hit off to the rally. And as usual she waxed my wallet buying beer and fodder for everyone at the table. Got up the next morning to check out of the B&B in Haddon to Bob. Told the woman I had to go to the machine to reap a few euros. I just fired up the B4 outside her door and burnt off. With my hand up to my gob between gear changes, I could feel the back breaking away. Then it fell off and I drove over it. 
and it sounded like Patty Joyce's Al Dexta. I did a run around the B&B, &B and was heading for Gordoyne a heap of nuts, and out pulls a white fiesta with yellow stripes. I put the boot to the floor and got caught below in the valley of death when the big turbo sucked in the small turbo and made mail of it. Then I got hauled into the heart shoulder for another two points and the 80 euro fine that goes with them. Am in thy suffering. By Jesus you are be the sounds of it. But I fucking told you about the mal kill cars and they read on the clippings at it. Sure I was above around that owl place years ago, and the cut of it, but you could not be told, you're a heedless cunt. And how is it that owl fucking car and the worker you with it, whilst able to get away from the squad car, tis high time you got rid of that thing. You did in fairness. What a kip, fucking brick and straps sticking up out of the ground around the yard, bean tins and potato skins thrown everywhere and a heap of greyhounds tied to a Renault 4 van. It's a real shithole. I get a dose of you squirts when I think of all the thousands I blew on that fucker, her house and her count of a cell on flat screen televisions, free to air boxes and goose feather quilts and I might as well have wiped my hollow with the lot for all the good it did me. The straw that broke the camel's back was the evening I went play in soccer in the astroturf at the center, and I pleaded with her not to go on the lush until the weekend, which would not have killed her as it was a Thursday, she agreed and said she was burned from it anyway. I was only gone for two fucking hours and I passed the Gregory on the way home, and I spotted her car, abandoned outside the front door and it thrown like a dog's shite. I torn after her and she perched above on the bar stool, polishing off a bottle of wine and she lashing the counter for more. Oh for fuck's sake, she can't be that bad. What did she say to you? Nothing. She just looked at me like a wild fucking animal. I tackled her and told her that the money was gone and that I was broke. She lost the head and went apeshit, roaring and shouting saying I was only a fucking waster. She cleared me there and then, and told me not to let her see me around the town again. I was mental and went up to the house and gathered up all me shit, clothes, televisions, free to air boxes, quilts, pillows, bed sheets, light bulbs and everything, you name it, I brought it. I was so fucking cracked I even brought the bulb out of the fridge cleaned the place and left it in the hallway and went home for the van. I knew I would be sleeping in the car that night so I went to Ennis for petrol first and by the time I got back to the house with the van she had the doors locked. And how did you lamp the chariot off the bridge and kill Tot? Sure you had no business down around there. A lad told me that you were avoiding God for the last 12 months in case the one would see you. And will you tell me what in the name of Jessus brings you up to Ennis for petrol and a fucking petrol station across the road from you? Sure that's crazy carry on. Is there something wrong with you? There's lunatics in Balanas Loan. They would not go on with that crack. Will you cop yourself on like a good laddie? What difference is it to you if I crash the car or where I go for petrol? It's not costing you anything. But sure it's pure crackness. Is it any wonder? That she went off the rails looking at that shit going on. Sure that crack would drive a saint to drink. It would be a decent thing if you drove to the cliffs of Moha or somewhere like that and sunk the bloody guy in her and not to be fucking bollocks in with petrol. Ah, uh, right. The last time I was at the cliffs of Moha, I got rode all right with a parking ticket. I parked abroad on the road cause it was seven or eight euro to park in the car park. I got a ticket and did not pay it and ended up in court with a 250 euro fine. Oh lord, you got scolded, and did you get a rider blowing at itself? No, but I bent her over and rolled her up against a rock the day we went for a walk up around Laucatra Castle. Mighty job. Wasn't she made up with the likes of you? Now Sean Tizel right for lads like you, but I have a lot to do. I'm putting off a job for myself there for weeks and I would rather drain Galway Bay with a silver spoon than go near it, but it has to be done. Sure you know what they say for no, a cobbler issue is the last to be mended. Right so Sean, I won't hold you up any longer. Sounds so cuss, sure I might give you a shout there tomorrow. All the best now Sean, good luck.